However, specialists warn that the crew of the Titan submarine has only 24 hours of breathing air remaining. Desperate family members and friends of the five people missing aboard the submarine believe they are losing time since sonar detectors detected banging noises. Three days after the deep sea craft vanished close to the Titanic disaster, rescue crews are battling against time. The U.S. Coast Guard said that loud pounding noises had been heard in the search region yesterday night, but it added that initial efforts to find the sub using underwater technology had yielded negative results. However, it gave rise to new hopes that the people inside were still alive and may be frantically banging cups on the side of the ship in an effort to be picked up by sonar. However, there may only be two ships on Earth capable of rescuing them because they are about two and a half miles below the surface at a height of 12,500 feet. The U.S. Coast Guard assessed last night that the Ocean Gate Expedition's craft, which is 22 feet long, has just over 40 hours of oxygen left. The five people on board, including British wealthy explorer Hamish Harding, continue to be in the deep waters of the Atlantic, a situation that experts have compared to being in space. Additionally trapped within our Shahzada Dawood, 48, his 19-year-old son Sulman, founder and CEO of Ocean Gate Stockton Rush, and French submersible pilot Paul-Henri Nargillet. According to marine monitoring data, five vessels are still on standby above the wreck, assisting the frantic search operations. Four additional U.S. Coast Guard vessels are also on their way, including one boat carrying medical professionals. One of Mr. Harding's close friends, Janet McKelson, made an agonizing appeal this morning, saying, We are losing time. I'm nervous, she said to the Today Show on BBC Radio 4. I'm so nervous that I'm physically ill. I'm worried and afraid. I'm not now sleeping. All I want is some positive news. Every every second and minute seems to go for hours. Another acquaintance, Colonel Terry Verts, who referred to Mr. Harding as the quintessential British explorer, emphasized that the clock is ticking to locate the five aboard. Rear Admiral Chris Perry, a retired British military officer, told LBC that it will be impossible to discover the missing deep sea ship in the allotted period without emitting signal. It appears as it was discovered that Ocean Gate declined to submit Titan to an impartial examination procedure. To aid with the final chance rescue, equipment was airlifted into a Canadian airport. And according to a friend of Mr. Harding, he canceled the trip because of safety concerns. I'm afraid the odds are vanishingly slim, Admiral Perry responded. Obviously, we want to maintain our optimism and hope, but there are two issues here. One, identifying the object itself. Second, how in the world are you going to remove it from the seabed? I don't think anyone has any ideas about how to do it right now, the speaker said adding that it has never been done before. Dr. Michael Gillen, a scientist who nearly perished when exploring the Titanic disaster in 2000, said that the crew members who are trapped could be using cups to pound on the sub's side to communicate. If their hydrophone failed so early in the mission, less than two hours down, which means they never reached down to the bottom, the very least they could do is take their cups and bang them against the side of the sub, he said on IDV's Good Morning Britain. That's what I would do if I were there, and I'm certain the pilot will tell everyone that as well. They have five individuals, and they can generate a lot of noise by simply beating on the sides and sound travels quite effectively in water. The news, DR, Gillen continued, gave him great hope that perhaps they are still alive. Another buddy of British millionaire Chris Brown said that he abandoned the disastrous journey because he had doubts about the ship's technology and construction materials. In reference to the hammering noises, the 61-year-old, who is also an adventurer, said on BBC Breakfast, That is just the sort of thing I would have expected Hamish to come up with. Hope never dies. You never give up as an adventurer, he said. The sounds heard every 30 minutes might be the result of personnel trapped within the submarine violently pounding on the ship's hull in an effort to be detected by sonar. Before delivering sonar sound energy to buoys at the surface, sauna buoys in the water listen to sounds. This is most typically referred to as a ping. The submarine may be stranded, according to Rear Admiral John Mauger, who is helping to organize the search. 
According to him, we don't have equipment on site that can do a survey of the bottom. It will be challenging to find it because there is a lot of rubbish. We're concentrating on attempting to find it right now. On Sunday, Titan ceased sending out signals. The final sonar ping it was scheduled to send to mothership Polar Prince was at 9.45 am, an hour and 45 minutes into the dive, when it was floating directly over the Titanic radar and GPS not working underwater. Admiral Perry said, It's utterly dark down there, and you also have a lot of mud and other stuff getting swept up, in reference to the circumstances in the ocean's depths. With searchlights, you can only see approximately 20 feet in front of you. You are being propelled by incredibly powerful ocean currents. Colonel Wirtz, a previous commander of the International Space Station, told the Today Show that he thinks the amount of effort being made will result in the group's survival. The clock is ticking, he said, and they are in a difficult situation. The corporation and submarine specifications state that they will run out of oxygen by Thursday. Hopefully we can wake them up soon because time is running out. The depth of the water exceeds two kilometers. It's like traveling to another world. It is chilly, gloomy, and under high pressure. Hours after the Canadian aircraft initially heard the noises, search equipment was spotted being put on board the Horizon Arctic last night to aid in the frenzied hunt. The bangs were initially mentioned in an email correspondence with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, which Rolling Stone was able to view, but Coast Guard officers later verified them. A aircraft allegedly detected underwater noises, and operations were relocated to ascertain the source. They had yielded negative findings as of this morning. The report stated, CC Halifax deployed a P-8, Poseidon, which has underwater detecting capabilities from the air. It did not specify the date or reason of the noises, though. The aircraft had reported a contact in a position near the distress position, it was noted. Every 30 minutes, the P-8 heard pounding noises in the neighborhood. Additional sonar was deployed four hours later, and thumping could still be heard. In order to create a search strategy for the deep Atlantic Ocean, rescue teams will now further analyze the daughter. Ocean Gate has come under fire as the hunt goes on, with Admiral Perry blasting the business this morning and saying the submarine journey was fundamentally dangerous and had no backup plan. Why, he said, you would actually have to sign away any right to sue the company for emotional damage, injury, or death in a dubious piece of technology is beyond me. There was no backup plan, it was experimental, and I'm ashamed to say there was some arrogance involved if you wanted to go ahead and do it, so it was inherently risky. However, a businessman who has previously traveled thousands of miles to the Titanic's ruins said he had faith in the crews and that there's a very good chance they will be found. The two men now on the sub, namely Paul and Stockton, are both excellent professionals, according to Oys and Fanning, who spoke with the BBC. I mean, to be honest, I'd want to be on a sub with them if I was in trouble. There is reason for hope. The Explorers Club president Richard Garriott D. Cahu remarked Wednesday night. In a statement, he said, Based on data from the field, we understand that likely signs of life have been detected at the site. We have much greater confidence that one there is cause for hope. According to Mr. Garriott D. Cahu, the U.S. Coast Guard is doing everything they can with all the resources they have. The Explorers Club's board of trustees was founded by Mr. Harding. The organization claimed to have direct access to the White House, the Coast Guard, the Air Force, and the Navy. The five occupants of the mini-sub would be in complete darkness in a temperature of about 3 coulombs 37 farads while the tragic vessel rolled over the seabed in the event that the power went out. There would also be no functioning propellers, lights, or heating. Where is it? said oceanographer and Titanic authority David Gallo. Is it submerged, floating, or in the middle of the water? That is something that is still up in the air. The depth of the water exceeds two kilometers. It's like traveling to another world. It is chilly, gloomy, and under high pressure. The Titanic tour provider Ocean Gate Expeditions called the Coast Guard on Sunday, but for some reason it took eight hours. At 5.40 p.m., it was reported to the U.S. Coast Guard, and at 9.13 p.m., it was warned to the Canadian Coast Guard. Ocean Gate, 
who began diving to the Titanic in 2021, is under scrutiny after it was discovered the Titan had electrical damage and had to be repaired since it was unable to survive the water before it sank, while families wait in agony for news. According to a story from Mail in Line yesterday, the tourist business in charge of the missing submersible also hesitated eight hours to notify the Coast Guard after it lost touch an hour and 45 minutes into its descent on Sunday. Titan was one of the only ships in the world capable of reaching the Titanic debris, which is located at a height of 12,500 feet. Even nuclear submarines are unable to travel so deep safely. Deep water diving experts are aiding Coast Guards in the unique and challenging mission, according to U.S. Coast Guard Captain Jamie Frederick. He told reporters while standing dockside that getting salvage equipment on the spot was a key priority. The top professionals are present despite the huge machinery and complexity. The specialists will consider the best strategy for retrieving the sub if it is found. The five passengers can use the decompression chamber if they are transported to the surface. Chris Brown, a thrill seeker and friend of Mr. Harding, decided against participating in the dive last night because he felt Ocean Gate was cutting too many corners. It has come to light. He paid the money to embark on the fateful journey but claimed to have changed his mind after being alarmed by the ship's technology and construction materials, the Sun reported Tuesday night. Using old scaffolding poles as ballast and having controls based on computer game-style controllers were two of his worries about Ocean Gate. Despite being one of the first people to sign up for this trip, he told the newspaper that he finally concluded the risks were too high. The Titan's five passengers, including Hamish, are presently missing, and Brown stated that he was really upset about Hamish. After having a few beers while on vacation at Sir Richard Branson's Necker Island, Brown and Harding decided to embark on the journey. He said that while the Titan was still being built, the couple paid the 10% down payment for the trip, whose cost has already more than quadrupled. Brown, though, said that he discovered Ocean Gate had missed crucial objectives while testing the submersible's depth in the years that followed. The multimillionaire digital marketing mogul was alarmed to see that the ship was being piloted by a PlayStation controller that had been modified. It is also believed that he was concerned about the technological difficulties and setbacks that occurred during the development process. He revealed to the Sun that the ballast for the submarine was made out of disused scaffolding poles. You could possibly utilize used scaffold poles if you were trying to build your own submarine. However, this was a commercial vessel. Brown finally sent an email to Ocean Gate asking for a refund since, according to him, risk is not something I shy away from. Despite saying that Harding is not the sort to panic, he is concerned for his pal. Keeping extremely calm, he thinks the billionaire is probably processing plans, schemes, and ideas through his enormous brain. Giving hope to the other passengers, according to Brown, is what Harding will be doing. Just weeks before the Titanic tourist submarine vanished, a U.S. Navy veteran warned of the terrifying health implications of being stranded in a submarine, Daily Mail, Comcan Report, DR. Dale Mole, the former director of undersea medicine and radiation health for the U.S. Navy, described the hostile environment on commercial submersibles in a paper that was published in a medical journal last month. Passengers were exposed to low oxygen levels, toxic carbon dioxide levels, and sub-freezing temperatures. Although most ships have restricted capacity, the Titan vessel, which is currently missing, will feature a carbon dioxide scrubber on board to eliminate extra hazardous gas that accumulates as passengers exhale in the small area. Carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere by a scrubbing mechanism, making the air safe to breathe. Tuesday, Mole told Daily Mail, Calm that if the passengers are not already dead due to a catastrophic rupture of the pressure vessel, it is very much a race against time to save them. The majority of people may think of oxygen when humans are enclosed in an airtight environment, but carbon dioxide is really a larger danger, he continued. They'll have some sort of carbon dioxide cleansing device in a submersible. That system wouldn't function if the batteries ran out. Due to the chilly temperatures at the ocean's depths, hypothermia is also a possibility. 
Panic episodes can also cause hyperventilation, which can deplete additional oxygen. The CEO of Titanic tourist business Ocean Gate Expeditions, Rush, was sued by a Florida couple who claimed he misled them about their trip to the ruin and wouldn't give them their $210,258 back when they complained. Mark and Sharon Hagel are well recognized for their charity and adventurous attitude. They acquired their money in commercial real estate. They made history by being the first married pair to travel to space in March 2022 while on the fourth Blue Origin passenger space trip. On a journey to the South Pole in 2016, they made the decision that their next adventure would be underwater. They were among the initial clients for Ocean Gate, which was started in 2009 by aviator and entrepreneur Stockton Rush, who is now 61 and was born in Seattle. However, they were never able to go on their vacation. As a result, they sued Rush in February of this year, accusing him of marketing the excursion while knowing it would be delayed and refusing to give them their money back.